please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. So the Nifty is currently at 10,491, but real action really is in the broader markets like we've been pointing out. So Naveen Shetty now joins in uh, and he's been covering all of the stocks which are in focus today and he has a wrap of that. Naveen, over to you. So I'll begin with Coromandel International. Remember, over the weekend, they had notified to the exchanges that they will be doing an intergroup transfer and will be acquiring the bio-pesticide and the micronutrient business of EID Perry. So that has come in as a good news because remember, this is a strategic fit for the company who is venturing into the crop protection business, especially in the bio-micronutrient space. So that comes in as a positive. The other stock which is up and running in today's trade is Gale. Although it has given up on its highs, but still we understand from news reports that that IOC as well as BPCL are keen on acquiring Gale to make an integrated entity. Uh, remember, CNBC TV18 hasn't verified these reports. On the other hand, GVK much breather comes for this company. Maybe after what four to five years, now they will be getting coal linkage for their Govindwal Saheb Punjab plant, which is close to what 520 megawatts. Remember, this plant has been stranded for the last four years since the two, uh, coal gates scam. On the other hand, Dilip Bildcon is up in trade today. Post the company planning to approve, uh, approve the raising of funds of close to 600 crore rupees for further expansion. On the other hand, Wellspun Corp, some order win for the company, close to 1,24,000 metric tons of pipe order has been coming to the company. And remember, the total order book for the company currently stands at around 7,500 crore. So quite a significant order win. Back to you. Okay, thanks for summarizing that uh, very beautifully for us. A lot of stocks in the news this morning. Pidilai, that's one stock that's been hitting new highs. In fact, it's had a phenomenal run this year. It's moved from 500 and now standing at 960. So done pretty well for itself. Uh, it's in focus this morning as the company's board will be meeting today to consider a buyback proposal. Uh, Mangalam, what can we expect? That's right, Sonia. So, you know, uh, the announcement came by on December 20th. Since then, the stock has moved around 7-8% as well. So, a lot of that is baked in the price. We need to know what happens now. The three key variables, of course, ahead of the bond meeting will be, one, the price at which they buy back, second, the amount that they buy back for, and third, will the promoters participate or not. So, just a couple of things. Uh, the amount that they will buy back could be considered uh, using the company's net worth. The net worth is uh, close to around 3,650 crores as of September 2017. With 10% board approval, they can buy about 366 crores. And with 25% shareholders approval, they can go ahead and buy 915 crore rupees. So remember, the market cap of the company is 50,000 crore rupees. So not too much in terms of additional sweetener coming in from the buyback. But the bigger point is that the promoters and the company believes that there is no bigger investment than their own company. So if the promoters who hold 70% stake in the company, they do, ha do go ahead and uh, uh, tender in that buyback, the acceptance ratio for uh, all the investors goes down to 0.8% if they do a board buy buyback, a board approval buyback or increases to just about uh, 2% if they go ahead and take a shareholders buyback and the promoters do participate in that. If they don't, then there is a lot more left on the table for the others. 2.6% acceptance ratio at 10%, which is the board approval and 6.6% if uh, uh, they go ahead and take the shareholders approval. Do they have enough cash and uh, 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 bank balance on their books? Of course they do. 1500 crores worth uh, cash as well as current investments. Uh, the larger point again is that despite the rally on that stock, the company still believes that uh, that theirs is the best investment. Okay, absolutely. Well, Manglam, thanks very much for that. That's on Pity Light. That stock at around 961 rupees. But it's been uh, very quiet for all pharmaceutical stocks in terms of news because of uh, the Christmas vacation for the month of December. But there are some important takeaways which have come in from the US FDA chief. In his latest tweet, he says that this year, FDA approved a record number of generic drugs. For the 11 months, which is from Jan to November, the US FDA has given 771 full and 168 tentative generic approvals. Plus, the December total is still to come. That compares to the second highest record in 2016, which was with a 12-month total of 630 full approvals. Not only that, in a reply to an article indicating cancer prices have risen, cancer drug prices have risen 1,400% with no challengers since 2013, the US FDA chief tweets that the FT is taking new steps to stem pricing abuses. Branded companies can help too by contracting carefully when they choose to out-license old generic drugs, building into these contract provisions that would help prevent abusive pricing. 
by the acquirers. In simple terms, what we can expect is that maybe 2018 will probably see more generic approvals come through beyond that 771, which uh, the US FDA has already done in 2017, and they're going to take all efforts. Uh, we are quite stable for the markets, nothing much to incrementally talk about, at least for the index, except for the fact that the mid cap index is at the high point of the day. But uh, if you want to talk about specific stocks, what seems to stand out today is what's happening with stocks such as Just Dial. That stock is up around 4 odd percent as we speak. We have Fortis, which is doing quite well today. So Fortis Healthcare should come up for you. That too is up around 3.5 odd percent or now even spiked up to around 6.5 odd percent. So just in the past couple of minutes is where we've seen that sort of incremental buying come in for Fortis Healthcare. Uh, a couple of other stocks which really stand out uh, right now also seems to be Reliance Communication. After all of that volatility that we've seen, it's currently settling at uh, Reliance Communication is the one that I'm talking about. Um, that one is settling at around 17 odd rupees at this point, so up around 4.3% currently for Relcom as well. Um, overall, it's looking quite stable and steady in terms of stocks. If you want to talk about a couple of stocks which seem to be declining within the broader markets, um, if you're talking about volumes, uh, Adani Transmission stands out. That stock is down. It's a little weak at this point. So do watch out for that. Relegay again from the entire Singh Brothers uh, space. That stock is down around 3 odd percent. So that too stands out at this point in time. Overall, it's looking quite uh, stable and quite quiet for the markets as well. So let's shift focus and move away from 2017. And as we head into the new year, will the market give stellar returns as it has in this year? And what's in store in terms of queues? Nischal Maheshwari, Head Institutional Equities, Edelweiss Securities joins in now. Nischal, hi, thank you very much for taking the time out. So the Nifty is given returns of 28% um, at current rec reckoning and the mid-cap index is up over 45%. Do you think 2018 is going to be as, as kind to us? Morning and uh, season's greeting from my side to your whole team. Um, yes, uh, uh, last year has been pretty good, but uh, what we have to be uh, uh, take into consideration uh, that the market has performed pretty well in the last year and uh, we are not entering the market at the same kind of valuation what we entered in the uh, beginning of 2017. Uh, so I believe that uh, uh, 12 to 15% kind of a return overall on the market uh, is definitely on the cards, uh, but the same kind of returns may not be uh, possible. Okay, Nishal, hi, good morning. You know, you're, um, I think, the sixth or seventh person that has told us that in the last two days, the fact that there is there should be caution in the system because of how heady valuations are. But generally, when people talk like that, the market doesn't relent, right? Um, do you think that at least in the first part of 2018, there seems to be no real headwind which could restrict the market's upside? Um, uh, yeah, I agree with you basically that there are no real headwinds uh, uh, at the moment. But uh, having said that, basically, I think uh, there are two or three things which one should look out for. One is uh, uh, the global growth and along with that comes the Fed tightening also. So uh, that is one thing basically we have to uh, look out for. The second thing is uh, if uh, uh, the tax cut goes across in the U.S., then I believe uh, uh, internally that uh, 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 dollar is headed upwards and uh, that on the peak. So I think these are two things and then the oil, if there is any untoward thing happens in the Middle East. So I think there are two or three headwinds which I, these headwinds are largely global in nature. Uh, okay, Nishal, we can't I hear you, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and, you know, just fix that audio a bit. Uh, we are resuming our conversation with Nishal Maheshwari, of, uh, who's the head institutional equities at uh, Edelweiss Securities. Nishal, sorry, you know, we, we didn't get a chance to finish that uh, conversation. You were telling us about the kind of sectors that you're looking at, and I briefly heard you mention uh, IT as well. Uh, the, the problem with IT now is that not only were they underperformers in the last year, uh, there are now H-1B visa norms that are going to get stricter, so you know there's further headwinds there. Um, is this a space that you would stay away from, or do you find some kind of opportunity in this adversity? 
So IT, I think uh, last year is to, uh, has underperformed uh, uh, massively, and uh, I think uh, given that uh, the outlook on the U.S. as well as the global market still continues to remain strong, and with this kind of a cuts basically which we are seeing in case of uh, uh, U.S. as far as tax is concerned, I believe that that uh, there would be more money in the hands of the U.S. corporates, and uh, that's going to be uh, good for the IT sector. We definitely believe that the discretionary spend in IT is going to come back in the current year. And uh, so the okay, uh, Nishal, you know we are having a bit of a technical issue with that line, so we're going to try and get you on the phone uh, to complete that uh, conversation and get your thoughts on it. In the meantime, let's just surprise you in terms of what's happening with the markets at this point. It's been um, quite quiet in terms of the mid-cap index outperforming and the Nifty just about consolidating at around 10,500. Let's see whether we manage to build on those gains at least over the next couple of trading sessions. Uh, if you're talking about frontline stocks that really stand out, it has to be something like uh, the entire metal space. So Vedanta, for example, is up around 1.3%. We have Gale, which is up around one odd percent at this point. Bosch, Bosch, which is the top gain on the Nifty, that stock is up around two odd percent. Well, Nishal, you know we had to get you on the phone because uh, I think the technicals are also just just about celebrating the new year and taking a holiday. So, if you could just complete your point about IT and uh, what you were saying. So, uh, I was saying that uh, IT has uh, not been on a, a very strong wicket last uh, year. Basically, they have uh, IT as a sector has underperformed. Uh, but uh, given that this year we have a very strong outlook as far as the U.S. is concerned, uh, again, uh, a very strong outlook uh, across the whole world uh, for the growth, I believe uh, uh, there is more money in the hands of U.S. corporates uh, to go out for discretionary spending. Uh, again, uh, the valuations are, are also on, uh, in the favor of the IT sector. So I definitely believe that this year IT sector is going to do uh, much better than last year, at least uh, grow along with the market, if not outperform it. The other sector which obviously hasn't uh, performed, in fact underperformed, Nishal, it has to be the pharmaceutical space. So do you think that 2018 could be the year where we could see positive news for a couple of companies and maybe valuations could just about uh, take over? So, uh, uh, I agree with you there, basically. I think some of these companies who have been waiting for a long period of time to get approvals from US FDA, you might see some of these uh, things coming through. But uh, my problem with the sector is basically that the nature of the sector has totally changed. So now, if you, uh, if you look at it earlier, we used to have these kind of US FDA inspections every three to four years. Now this is happening every year. And the norms are becoming stronger and stronger, uh, stricter and stricter for most of these companies. So uh, I believe uh, the valuations uh, should take a beating, actually, rather than uh, uh, holding on to these levels. Because the uh, market is still not factoring in uh, the kind of volatility these kind of events cause. And again, on the generic front in the U.S., we have not seen any leeway, basically, as far as the pricing is concerned. So I think pharma is, uh, uh, is a sector one can uh, uh, equivalent, equivalent weight or uh, underweight uh, 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 in its portfolio. Okay, underweight on pharma. Uh, just one final question from my end then, Nishal. You know, um, there could be a possible government dole out, a higher government dole out in this budget. There are talks of uh, stepping up in public spending, uh, you know, ish, uh, sort of um, uh, a lot of disbursements to, uh, to sort out the pharma distress as well. Um, is this a space that you are uh, bullish in? Because we, we've seen no money has been made in fertilizers, no money has been made in agrochemicals largely. Uh, tractors have now started to do well. Um, so is this just a story that plays out every budget and doesn't make investors money? Or is this agri theme something that you would look towards? So, uh, government uh, dole out, we have to see uh, in what way it happens, basically. But I definitely see that there is going to be uh, some SOPs which will come for, uh, uh, especially uh, the, in terms of M higher MSPs, which will mean better pricing uh, for the farmer, where he can say that he can afford a, a lot more farmers, uh, uh, sorry, a lot more fertilizers, a lot more um, uh, agrochemicals. So I think that way it will be a second derivative where you're going to start seeing the uh, pricing improvement uh, happening. The other uh, uh, part which I see is uh, uh, 
uh, something like a gen irrigation which has got the um, uh, micro irrigation part uh, where once again the government uh, subsidies will help him to uh, do much better uh, and tractors obviously is the another thing basically but i think beyond this uh, space uh, you would you can look at some seed companies also because if there is more money in the hands of farmers i think all these things are going to uh, benefit and obviously the consumption sector the fmcg will do better there is no doubt about that